salmon poached in red wine with a red wine and butter sauce. Okay, we're going to start by preparing the red wine marinade. We're going to add a tablespoon of butter here over medium heat. We're going to melt it and then sweat some shallots in it. The shallots go in and then we just give it a stir. We're going to add in our tarragon, our dried tarragon. Stir that a little bit and the heat of the saute will begin to release the essential oils. We're going to crush some garlic cloves, about three here, and put those in as well just to flavor the sauce, or the marinade rather. In this case we're going to strain everything out later so you don't even have to remove the paper from the garlic if you don't want to. I'm going to throw in a few peppercorns. You can crack them slightly if you'd like, but it'll work either way. And now the wine goes in and we're going to use a whole bottle here. The next step is to bring it to a boil and then I'm going to burn off the alcohol. Whenever you're using wine in a marinade it's always best to burn off the alcohol. Alcohol can cause the protein molecules and whatever it is you may be marinating to constrict and prevent the marinade from fully flavoring uh, the protein, in this case fish. Once it's lit, turn the burner off and keep a lid handy to snuff it out if it tries to get out of control. This is an option. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, then by all means, don't do it. We're going to let the marinade completely cool down as we prepare our salmon fillets. In this case, we need to remove the skin from the fillets. We start by slipping a sharp knife between the flesh and the skin, and then we gently remove the skin keeping pressure on the blade down toward the skin and not taking off any more of the flesh as necessary. This is really easy to do if you have a sharp knife and you just take your time. After I make the first cut I'll hold the skin with my fingers and slide the knife through and make the second cut removing the skin entirely. Salmon has a dark fat layer on the back that I like to remove. It's kind of oily and it has sort of a fishy taste, but some people like to leave it and of course it's the good type of fat that's good for you. But, you know, to each his own, but I like to remove it myself. You want to always feel the salmon as well for pin bones, just to make sure they've all been removed. We're going to prepare our salmon for the marinade. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt. Then we're going to strain the marinade across the top of the salmon, straining out all the shallots and the um, herbs, garlic, etc. We want to make sure we press all the juices out though, get every bit of the flavor. You want the salmon completely immersed in the marinade. You can also put the salmon in a Ziploc bag and pour the marinade over it, sealing it up. Marinate the salmon for one to two hours in a refrigerator. Okay, so the salmon has absorbed the marinade, taken on a deep purple color, and of course, taken on the flavors of the marinade as well. As you see by the orange on the underside of the one filet, I should have flipped these over halfway through so they would marinate equally top to bottom. We are going to reserve a quarter cup of marinade per filet for making the sauce. 
so in this case it'll be a half a cup and we want to go ahead and start the sauce reducing while we're working on the other aspects of this dish starting by preheating the oven to 300 degrees we pour the remaining marinade over the fillets in a pan that can go from stove top to oven. Using parchment paper we are going to make a cartouche to cover the fillets with while they are in the oven to protect them. The process of making and using a cartouche for covering food that is in the oven is a method that is found often in French culinary practice. It's probably a little overkill here, but I thought I'd show it to you. This is a tool of refinement in a way. So first we size the parchment paper to the pan, checking it each time we fold it so that it, the point, one corner, fits to the center. And we continue to fold it, checking it as we go. Once we get it folded into a dart shape, we take a pair of kitchen shears and trim it to fit, cutting the hole in the center to allow the steam to escape. And there we have our cartouche. You can make cartouches for square, rectangular, or oval casseroles as well. Okay, so now we're going to bring the poaching liquid up to a simmer. Once it reaches the simmer we cover it with our cartouche and then the whole thing goes into the oven for a, approximately six minutes to start with. Meanwhile we'll finish our sauce. And though I didn't show it in this video the sauce would have been reducing out of sight while we were making our cartouche to the point where a, a light sauce had already developed through reduction. Now we move on to the mounting stage. And this is where we beat in the remaining tablespoons of cold butter to uh, thicken the sauce and to give it its final flavor. It should be beautifully rich and smooth and silky with an unctuous taste and mouthfeel. Once you start the mounting process, you do not want to bring the sauce back to a simmer at all. It must be kept warm but not allowed to boil. Otherwise the sauce will break. The milk solids and the fats will separate and it will become greasy and messy and basically you've ruined it. And this is the tricky part when it comes to mounting sauces is not allowing the sauce to break by allowing it to get too warm. Often the residual heat in the pan is enough to melt the butter and allow us to emulsify it into the wine reduction. There's almost an unlimited amount of butter you can beat into a sauce this way and create the emulsion, but you're really looking for a nice, glossy, velvety sauce with a rich, buttery flavor. Once you've finished mounting the sauce, taste it for additional seasoning. In this case I'm adding a little additional salt and pepper. You can set it aside now but keep it warm on a low, very low heat setting. After six minutes in the oven check the fillets for doneness. In this case, the fillets were actually a little overdone because I had had the oven set at 350 degrees. I changed that in the recipe to 300. However, if they are underdone to your liking, put them back in the oven for another minute to two minutes. We want to immediately remove them from the poaching liquid and place them on a paper lined plate to sop up any excess marinade before we plate them. We don't want any liquid from the fillets to run all over the plate making a mess. We want them to be dry when they go on the plate. And then we'll sauce them and it'll make a nice beautiful presentation. I'm serving them with these beautiful green beans that have been reheated with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and of course lemon juice. 
Also, we're using our riced cauliflower milanese as a side dish, which I'm uh, plating with a ring mold. Of course, you don't have to get this fancy, but it makes a nice little presentation. The recipe and techniques for these side dishes are also on my website at chefkylermaking.com. I'm going to garnish the cauliflower with either parsley or chopped chives and a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. You'll see here where the paper towel has soaked up excess marinade and therefore when I put it on the serving plate it won't be running all over the place making a mess. And of course, you're using your impeccably clean hands, as Julia Child would say. Now just spoon some sauce over the top. You can be as generous as you like with it, but you don't want to overpower the protein with the sauce. Plus, you don't want a big sauce puddle running all over the place when you go to serve it. I'm going to finish the fish by garnishing with a little fresh cracked pepper and then just a pinch of flair de sel. And just a little bit of lemon zest for the beans makes a nice presentation and adds some punchy flavor at the end that you, when you bite into it, you get that nice lemon burst of flavor in your mouth. Okay, so we're ready to serve. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been instructive as well as entertaining. And for these recipes and other videos, please check out my website at cheftylermakin.com. That's cheftylermakin.com. Thank you.